Hey, what's up? In 1887, nobody knew of any man-made structure that exceeded a height of 171 meters. That's even shorter than the Washington Monument. When the French decided to build a tower that was roughly double that height, people thought it was madness and could lead to a disaster. Most of the criticism came from the Parisians themselves. But contrary to expectations, France presented to the world one of its most important and famous landmarks ever. Despite its fame and worldwide reputation, the story of the Eiffel Tower's construction and its accompanying events is rich with hidden secrets and mysteries that most people are unaware of. Welcome to our channel. In this episode, we're going to talk about the iconic Iron Lady of Paris, the Eiffel Tower. But before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest videos. Let's get started. First things first, contrary to popular belief, the famous tower is not called the Eiffel Tower. In English, it's pronounced Eiffel but in French, it's pronounced Eiffel. The name comes from the architect Gustave Eiffel, the owner of the company responsible for designing and constructing the tower. Despite the tower being named after him, he was not the sole genius behind the architectural design of the Parisian Iron Lady. The design actually belongs to two engineers who were employees of Eiffel's company at the time. Their names were Emile Nugier and Maurice Cochelin. The latter had previously collaborated with Gustav Eiffel on designing the metal structure of the Statue of Liberty, which had been completed and delivered to the United States one year before the tower project began. When the engineers presented their design to Eiffel, he was impressed and decided to purchase the rights from them. He personally supervised its construction and spent a considerable amount of money from his own pocket. In 1889, Paris was set to host a world exposition to showcase the achievements of participating countries and their overall progress in various fields. It was a celebration marking the centennial of the French Revolution. And the organizers decided to build a monumental memorial in the Champ de Mars Square in the heart of the French capital. They wanted a giant tower that would reflect the country's construction capabilities and serve as the entrance to the world exposition. They announced an open competition to choose the best design. And out of more than a hundred submissions, Gustav Eiffel's project was selected. From the moment the proposed tower project was announced, it sparked a storm of controversy, criticism and doubts about its structural integrity. Many Parisians were worried about having such a tower in their city, questioning its safety, especially given its immense height. At that time, no man-made structure had ever reached or even come close to 300 meters. Several writers and intellectuals claimed that the tower was useless and a waste of time and money. Despite the opposition, Gustav Eiffel's project was approved. And the construction of the tower's foundations began. A massive campaign against the project was led by a group of prominent artists and writers resulting in the formation of a committee of 300 members, led by the prominent architect Charles Garnier. The number of committee members was chosen to represent a reduction in the tower's height. Each member was considered a deduction of one meter from its total height. The committee sent a petition titled Artists Against the Eiffel Tower to the Minister of Works and Commerce, using strong language to express their objection and invoking the name of French taste. Gustav Eiffel responded to them. He compared the tower to the pyramids and said that while the magnificent structures in Egypt were admired, they were met with ridicule in France. The construction of the tower's foundations began on January 28, 1887. The idea was based on four pillars, representing a square base with sides measuring 125 meters. Steel columns or legs were erected on these foundations, reaching a height of 300 meters above ground level. The legs were connected to platforms as they ascended, 
eventually meeting each other. The legs were supported by four concrete slabs, each measuring two meters thick and extending seven meters below ground level. However, due to two legs being close to the Seine River, engineers were concerned about water seepage into the foundations. To prevent this, they designed metal chambers underground to support the concrete slabs and prevent water from infiltrating. Construction of the tower commenced with the assistance of several hundred workers and required 18,000 iron pieces, 2,500,000 nails, and had a weight estimated at 7,300 tons. With the addition of elevators, shops, and aerial wires, the current weight of the tower is around 10,100 tons. The construction of the tower was completed on March 31, 1889. Gustav Eiffel himself was the first to climb the tower's 1,710 steps before the French flag was hoisted at its summit as planned for the celebration. During the exposition, the tower was ready to awe the world, thanks to Gustav Eiffel and his company which contributed over 80% of the construction costs. The French government granted permission to utilize the tower for 20 years and recover their investments before transferring ownership to the French government. However, during this period, the government decided to dismantle the tower and use it as scrap metal. Gustave Eiffel attempted to prove the tower's significance beyond monetary profits in an effort to prevent its dismantling. He decided to install a wireless telegraph transmitter atop the tower and financed experiments to use it in wireless communication. The tower indeed played an active role in sending and receiving wireless messages, particularly during World War I. Recognizing its value as a wireless monitoring station, the French government disregarded the idea of dismantling the tower. Today, the tower boasts over 100 aerial wires that receive radio and television signals from around the world. Additionally, the tower houses a scientific laboratory where researchers study astronomy, meteorology, and aerodynamics. In 1925, the Citroen Automobile Company leased the Eiffel Tower and used it as a massive advertising billboard. They installed 250,000 colored lights that formed the French company's name on the tower. For nine years, the lights were illuminated daily to showcase the company's name on the giant tower in the heart of the French capital. The advertisement was so clear that it could be seen from approximately 32 kilometers away. However, after the company went bankrupt in the 1930s and was sold to a different company, the name was removed from the tower, and the new owners declined to renew the contract. The appearance of the tower has changed over the decades, with its color being repainted several times. Since its opening in 1889, the tower has been painted approximately 19 times at an average of once every seven years. The painting process is done manually by a team of approximately 25 painters, using brushes and about 60 tons of paint at a time. The tower's colors have varied from reddish-brown at its inauguration to yellow and chestnut, among others. Since 1968, the tower has been painted in a bronze color. The painting process is one of the most crucial factors in preserving the tower. Gustav Eiffel talked about something in his book, The 300-Meter Tower. He said it's likely that we won't fully appreciate the true impact of the tower's paint. It serves as the main element for preserving the metal structure. And its accuracy in execution determines the tower's endurance and preservation. The Eiffel Tower held the record for the tallest man-made structure for 41 years. Then, in 1930, the construction of the Chrysler Building in New York City was completed, reaching a height of 381 meters. However, an antenna was installed on top of the Eiffel Tower in 1957, raising its height to 324 meters, surpassing the Chrysler Building. But even with the addition of the antenna, it couldn't surpass the height of the Empire State Building, which was completed in 1931 and reached a height of 381 meters, being one of the most famous tourist attractions in the world. Like the Eiffel Tower, it has inspired many similar replicas around the globe. One of the earliest examples is the Blackpool Tower, which was opened in London five years after the completion of the Eiffel Tower. If you take a look at the tower, 
you'll notice a significant resemblance between it and the Eiffel Tower. And there's also the Tokyo Tower in Japan, which was built as a communication tower in 1958 and was also inspired by the design of the Eiffel Tower. However, in reality, there is no comparison to the magnificence of the Eiffel Tower with any other replica. Whether in terms of design, construction, or even the proposed cost of building a similar structure in our current era, which researchers estimate to be over $480 million. One of the most famous secret rooms in the world was created by Gustav Eiffel himself, located at the top of the tower, where he enjoyed the breathtaking view it provided of the capital city of Paris. Gustav used the room to hold meetings with various public figures, including the American Thomas Edison, with rumors circulating about the existence of the secret room. Several wealthy French individuals made enormous offers to use or stay in the room even for just a day. However, all their offers were rejected. And the room remained off-limits to the public until 2015, 92 years after Gustave's death. If you want to know more about hidden secret places in plain sight, we have a separate episode on our channel. I wonder. If you were a resident of the French capital at the time of the announcement of the tower's construction, would you have supported its construction? Or would you have been afraid of the possibility of its collapse and considered it a waste of effort and money? Write your opinions in the comments, and if you liked the video, don't forget to like, share. And for those who are new here, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to receive our latest videos. See you in the next episode.